Devolver Digital are back with Pepper Grinder and this it's a platformer with a twist. Now I've been really excited for this one and I've been saying for a while and now I do think all of you should be too, but does it meet expectations? Well, that's what we're here to find out today. My name's Alex, and if you enjoy this review, subscribe, it helps the channel a huge amount. Now quickly, this may be our main channel, but we also have Gamer Corner. That one is long plays and unedited commentary, just more my initial reaction. I've actually done a full playthrough of this game over there, so I'll be linking that down below. There's also a breakdown of all of the different bosses. The so story is minimal, to the point of being essentially non-existent. What I could grasp, we are shipwrecked and our treasure is stolen by a local tribe of some sort. Uh, basically a collection of unusual creatures that gradually get more dangerous. It's not really a complaint, it is a platformer, it is expected. But there's some really unique characters on this journey that I would have honestly loved to have learned more about. So gameplay is, of course, where it is at for this one, and for the most part, I'm going to say it succeeds. It's trying something different, it feels great, and that is basically we can move and jump like any platformer, but the real joy here is in using your drill. This can dig into different surface types, and you're going to be flying all over the place. The challenge here is, as you dig, you can't stop until you exit, meaning you need to maintain control, and often... You're going to be navigating above drops that spell instant death. And as you do progress, you'll also learn to boost jump, swim, skim across the top of water, and even grapple. This, though, is where the game shines. That movement, the technical navigation, it just gets seriously creative with its collection of levels. And in total, there's four worlds to overcome with multiple levels packed in each. They also each feature their own unique boss encounter. This said, though, the combat is a little rougher around the edges we need to connect the drill with the enemies but the hitboxes can feel a little i don't know tough to read and it will lead to some basic mistakes or at least initially until you start to really kind of understand the game's setup i think if anything the game kind of lacks a little in the feedback in these moments and it doesn't feel quite heavy enough when it comes to the levels themselves, then each world is themed, so jungle, ice, lava, water, but they have so many ideas packed in, puzzles that you're going to need to navigate, such as flicking switches by drilling towards them, a gun attachment for a short while that turns you into just beast mode, vehicles which you can commandeer, and that's honestly not everything, I'm just being very wary of spoilers. I will warn you, however, the levels here ramp quickly, and it expects you to master its mechanics drilling grappling swinging all sorts going on and it's all going to be then by the end game in one continuous motion or basically death that was kind of the last few levels and i found it incredibly challenging basically i died a lot and while the video on game corner shows a runtime of under two hours that has been edited for a lot of those death sequences so i'd say realistically I was playing for somewhere in the region of three hours. Now, I will admit as well, when I hit the end game, I actually didn't think that was going to be the case, and it is still on the short side. That said, though, there's a huge number of things to come back for, and that's really what you want. There's five collectible coins hidden within each level. I didn't get half of those. If you do get ten, however, you unlock a bonus stage, one in each world. There is a sticker book where you can collect all of the different pieces and yet yeah, build a scene out that is on the main menu then there's not only the core story mode but also time attack and that's what i'm personally most excited for i want to see the speedrunners get a hold of this game because i think they are absolutely gonna adore it so where do you get all of these different collectibles well the coins are in the levels themselves as i said but the stickers those are actually purchased and that's because there's a shop on the world map here we can use the gems we are collecting fire exploration on the different stickers it comes from this fending machine kind of system but alongside this there's also a heart machine and i really like this basically you have four hits before death as standard if you do die you're thrown back to the last checkpoint but here with this fending machine what you can basically do is you can extend it by four temporarily it's basically a purchasable buffer that's a great option for those kind of starting to learn the ropes problems then and we've already mentioned the combat but i'm going to say the boss encounters i actually enjoyed them but the difficulty of them feels a little all over the place the first was in my opinion more difficult than the second for example also however they make up a big part of this experience you know there's four worlds there's four bosses but two of them actually broke on me in my full playthrough video you're going to see it once but one character got stuck in the corner i was able to just take them down with no challenge and then the same thing occurred on the final boss section where they just went stationary not reacting and i was able to take them down in moments 
Some may honestly be thankful for this because, as I said, it's incredibly difficult at times, especially the final boss, but it needs a patch. It seems to be kind of random as well as a warning. It may not actually happen to you. As I loaded them both up again, the issue wasn't present, but then I reloaded them up a third and fourth time, and one of them froze, then the other froze as well. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a luck situation, I guess, but with how difficult these moments can actually be, there's going to be a good chance you eventually hit one. Aside from that though, and the combat that we discussed, I've had a blast. I'd love to see them add new content, you know, maybe a new world, as it is once again on the short side, but talk about a game that's just packed full of ideas and it just doesn't dwell on them. It keeps pushing things forward. And yeah, once again, that challenge is real. Visually, I love it. The pixel art is stunning throughout. Not only do we get different themes for each world as well, but they constantly unfold what may start as water, for example, turns into, let's say, swamp area. So it's really nice to see that level of effort packed in. The movement, the drill, the different abilities, they all look solid too. There are a few clunky elements here and there. The grappling hook, for example, feels a little rigid, but that's also by design to make it easier to read. Then the game bosses. These are often creatures that will tower over you, but the use of almost 3D in these sequences as they turn around and move, it's really impressive. It's kind of this really unique style that fits in really well with the rest of the package, but it still kind of elevates them, you know, it makes them stand out. My only real actual complaint, I guess, is the store's a nice idea, the vending machines, you know, it's fun initially and there's kind of bits to run around to, but I think a traditional menu here could have been a good idea as well because it can make what could be kind of simple, you know, expanding your health, for example, into this whole animated process that you need to kind of repeat and wait on. The music then, incredible. Throughout the whole game, it's just one banger after another, and the title of music in particular just goes hard. It just immediately gets you in the mood for the action ahead, and when you combine the quick movement with the music, it just makes things feel intense. It makes you want to go quick. Sound effects then are solid throughout as well, but yeah, it's not the busiest of sound fields here. Instead, it's relying on that music, and I really do think that was a wise choice. Overall, a pepper grinder is a winner, and right now it's a great 8 out of 10 from me. What's letting it down is the boss issue more than anything. It needs a patch for that, and then there's just a few things they could do with some fine tuning. This said, it's one of the best platformers I've played in a good while, and sure, it may be on the short side, but when you look at it from a creativity perspective, it's been a long time since I've seen a platformer not only try so many new things, but also challenge you constantly in different ways. And that's what I respect the most here, the passion here. It is clear, and I hope it finds success, because now, personally, I just want to see more. So will you be checking out Pepper Grinder? Let us know in the comments. With that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.